here we go. We're going to make a gingerbread log cabin. I found this idea in a Canadian Living Holiday Best magazine from 2003 that I had in my recipe book collection and I always wanted to try it. So to get started, you need some gingerbread dough and you're going to need approximately three batches of dough. And the recipe recommends you do them one at a time. So in a large bowl, you're going to place one cup of vegetable shortening, add one cup of sugar to that, and then beat it with an electric mixer or by hand until it's light and fluffy. Then beat in two eggs, one at a time, until they're incorporated. And don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl. And then you're going to pour in one and one quarter cups of molasses. The recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of fancy and a half a cup of black strap or cooking molasses. We only have one kind of molasses in our grocery stores and that's the fancy kind. So that's what I'm putting in here. Blend that together well and then you're going to set it aside and prepare the dry ingredients, which is six and one quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ground ginger, teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of cloves, and blend that all together until it's e all the spices are even evenly distributed into the flour. And then add it to the wet ingredients a little bit at a time and approximately three additions. Um, I'm using a spoon to stir it all the way through. However, you could use an electric mixer at the beginning when the, the dough is still soft enough. So I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time until the dough forms together into a ball. Towards the end, it starts getting quite stiff and I started blending it with my hands, but you don't have to do this. If you have a, a strong enough mixer or one of those, uh, those big chef master mixers, you could probably handle this quite easily. And eventually you're gonna turn it out onto the countertop and make sure that it forms a nice dough ball. And once you have the dough ball, you're going to cut it into two equal portions, put them in plastic, wrap them up in plastic wrap or put them in plastic bags and chill them in the refrigerator for at least two hours or until firm. This is actually quite a nice gingerbread uh, dough to work with. And it actually tastes really good too. Now, in order to cut out the pieces you're going to need of the dough to make your little log cabin, um, you're going to make these templates. These were made on bristle board and the dimensions of each piece I'm going to put in the description box below. And you're just going to have to cut out the parts that you're going to need based on the measurements that are in the description box. And there's chimney pieces, there's roof porch pieces, pieces windows, uh, so on and so forth. That's the chimney top part. And for the actual chimney itself, you're going to need one of those. Each of those little squares is one inch. So using this photo from the magazine, draw out a grid with one inch squares on a piece of bristle board and then just reproduce this design by looking at this photo. It's not that hard to do. This is what you're going to need. You're also going to need to make this little notch template. This is the template you're going to use to make notches into the logs that you're going to use to build the log cabin with. So this template, as you can see, I'm, the dimensions are written on it. it. You're going to have a little rectangle with a notch taken out of it. The notch is going to be 7 sixteenths deep and this outer edge here is 5 eighths. The width is 1 inch and the long side is 2 and a quarter inches. So you just need to cut out a template like that. Now taking one half portion of the dough, you're going to put it between layers of parchment paper or wax paper. And you have to do this because it's very sticky on with a rolling pin. It'll stick to the rolling pin and come apart. And you don't want to add too much flour to it because it's going to make it really tough. And you're going to spread it out into a rectangle that is 11 and a half by 8 inches wide. Now what I did to assist me with this is on the, on the underneath side of the wax paper, I actually drew an 11 and a half by 8 inch rectangle just to make it easier for me to get the right dimensions. And by using exactly a half a batch of dough, you're gonna get the right thickness if you put it in to that size of a rectangle. And then you're simply gonna cut one half inch strips until you get 16 of them. So 16 strips for one 11 and a half inch by eight inch rectangle. And then once you've cut up all the strips, you're gonna put this in the freezer for 20 minutes and make sure that it's quite chilled. And you're gonna do this for all of your parts. They're all gonna be chilled in the freezer for at least 20 minutes until they're quite solid. 
and you can see how solid they are there. You can easily transport them. To bake them, you're going to put eight of these little logs onto one baking sheet. And then I'm just pinching the tops to round them off a little bit. And you can also use a ruler to make sure that they're nice and straight. Put a, a ruler on both sides and just give them a little squeeze to make sure they're nice and straight. And then you're going to bake them one sheet at a time in a 350 degree oven until firm to the touch, about 18 minutes. There they are baked just out of the oven. And while they are still hot, you're going to make sure that they are 11 and a half inches long. And these are going to be the logs that are going to be used for the long side of your cabin. And there's the notch template that you made. Take the notch template while the logs are still hot and cut out the notch at the end of each log. So each log will have two notches in it. Just like the Lincoln logs that you may have played with as a child that you use for building. So you're going to cut a notch on both ends of each log on the same side and then you're going to set them aside to cool. Now for the short, for the short side of the log cabin and for the porch supports you're going to need another half a batch of dough Roll it out again into an 11 and a half inch by 8 inch rectangle and the thickness will be determined by the, because it's a half a batch of dough, then you're going to cut off a 2 and a half inch strip. So what you're going to have left is a 9 inch by 8 inch rectangle and then you're going to slice it up into 16 1 half inch logs. And then you're going to do the same thing, you're going to put it on a cookie sheet, put it in the freezer for 20 minutes take them out, split them in two, into two cookie sheets with eight each, bake them up, take them out and put the notches in them like we did before. Now for that two and a half inch piece you put aside, you're just going to slice it into four sections. These are going to be the supports for the porch. You're going to bake them up like you did for the side pieces, except when after they're baked you're going to leave two plain with no notches and two of them you're only going to put one notch on one end and when I do the assembly you'll see what I mean when I do that. Now once again you need a half a batch of dough you're going to roll it out to another 11 and a half by 8 inch rectangle and you're going to do the same thing you're going to put it in the freezer for 20 minutes and then you're going to bake them up eight at a time on a cookie sheet until they are done. Once they come out of the oven, however, you can do something a little bit different with these pieces. You're going to put six of them together so that they're all stuck together. Then you're going to take the piece, the, rect the triangle that you made, which are the gable ends, place it on top of the logs while they're still hot, and then just cut out your triangle shape, just like that. You'll notice you have some leftover pieces. This would be a good time to recut some notches that um, recut some logs that you may have broke, might have broken when you were cutting out the notches because they do break sometimes. So those extra pieces are good for that if you happen to need some logs that you've broken during the process. Now for the roof and the porch, you're going to roll out another half a batch of dough, but this time a little bit bigger, 12 and a half by 11 inches wide. So it's a bigger rectangle. It's a little bit thinner. And to cut it out, you're just simply going to put your roof template and your porch template right over top of the parchment paper. It's easier to cut over top of the parchment paper. And using a sharp knife, just cut out the roof section and the porch section, which is kind of easy because it's just two rectangles. And then do the same thing with it. You're going to uh, freeze it for 20 minutes on a cookie sheet, take it out, bake it uh, until they are done. And then when, as soon as they come out of the oven, take your pieces again, put them over top and cut off the excess because cookies always uh, spread a little bit while they're baking. And so, cause you want to have the exact dimensions, you're just going to cut off the excess. And of course we're going to do this while the cookies are still hot because that way they're less brittle. And then you're going to let them cool completely. Make sure that your roof pieces and your porch pieces are very well baked and they're golden brown. You need them to be quite cooked. Now to make the chimney piece, you're going to roll out another half batch of dough to about a quarter of an inch thickness. So you're not going to have to worry about a rectangle shape for this. Then take your chimney template and cut it out. And while you're at it, you're going to do the same thing with your window template, the chimney sides, the chimney top, and the door. 
You're going to cut out all these pieces. You're going to freeze them in the freezer for 20 minutes until they are firm. And then you're going to be able to just peel off the scrap pieces around your cutouts at that point. It's easier to do once the dough is frozen. And then place them on baking sheets on parchment paper. And before you bake it, take a butter knife or, or a ruler and you're going to just mark little plank shapes on top of the door just to make it look like uh, the door is made of wooden planks. This dough actually holds um, marks quite, quite nicely if you want to put marks into it. Then when they come out of the oven, same thing as with the roof pieces, put the template right back on top while the cookies are still hot and cut out so you get your original shapes again. You can see how much that the dough spreads when it's baking. And then let them cool completely. It's important that you let all the pieces cool completely on wire racks. And part two, the assembly, will be posted soon.